So in this short pause in racing, I'll bring you a few results, starting with race 13, which was the first side-by-side -side race we had here this afternoon. And that was a heat of the championship doubles, and that was a win for Cambridge University Women's Boat Club B crew. The following heat was a win for Leander, and the following heat after that was another win for Cambridge University Women's, this time the A crew. That was the con crew containing Emma Andrews and Paula Vesselman. The academic aspiration lates. The first heat of that was a win for Oxford Brooks over Bath University, followed by a win for the University of Rhode Island B crew by three quarters of a length over Edinburgh University. The Bath University Bristol Composite beat the University College of Dublin ladies crew. And in the fourth heat of the academic aspiration lates, it was a win for Glasgow University by two and a half lengths over United Hospitals A. I have to say the cameraman is being pretty merciless here. Zooming right in on the crestfallen rowers. Not really what they want. There we go. Oh, no. You can see James Lee on his phone. I'm sure he's being as efficient as ever in getting this dealt with. But here we go. The, uh, the abandoned shell is being towed off the course, we hope, so that these eights can get underway. I mean, I suppose from, from their perspective here, they can sort of make a joke out of things, but try and relax themselves. But I can imagine the warm-up they've done will have been timed meticulously. Absolutely. I think they've now been sitting on the start line for quite a while. I think, you know... Uh, So we're just thinking about, you know, times that we have been delayed at the start, or we have had to undergo unforeseen circumstances. I think Zoe's got a got a story that she wants to share with us. Yeah. So my first uh, Henley Royal final was actually ten years ago, and um, I was racing in the ladies' plate with Leander, and we were sitting um, just behind just behind the start line, waiting to start, and. Uh, a, suddenly a huge thunderstorm came in with lightning as you do. and yeah and we were sat there and as soon as the lightning came obviously very dangerous to be on the water especially in a long thin carbon fiber thing so um we were immediately told we had to get off the water and we're down here at the start so there's not really very many places to go we pulled our boat off the water we hid in the uh the, the bar tent that's usually up here. A typical Henry Royal Regatta experience. Yeah. And just had to wait until um, until it passed. And it was probably a good 20 minutes or so before they let us back on the water. And then actually we had to do just that. We had to warm up again. So they said, as we went back on the water, they said, okay, you can have 20 minutes now to, to warm back up before we start. And, uh, and yeah, and we just had to take it from there, really. But I remember personally getting colder and colder and colder because I was absolutely, absolutely soaked. And I was wearing probably an all-in-one and a thin splash top and I was just completely soaked. And as my crew got warmed up, I just got colder and colder and colder. And eventually we got on the start line and you know managed to race our final. But You expect that at head races, don't you? But at Henley Royal Regatta, the, the peak of the British summertime, perhaps not? No, it wasn't quite what I expected. I remember getting through the race, and then as soon as I crossed the line, just thinking, I can't remember the last time I was this cold. Did you win? We did, yeah. Ah, well, it's all worth it in the end, I suppose, to win the ladies' plate. It's a pretty special feeling, I imagine. And, of course, Henley Royal Regatta entries have been released now, so we're just under two weeks away from, from that. Very much looking forward to a fantastic few weeks of racing on the Henley stretch, and that, that Royal Regatta is followed by the town and visitors. So if you are interested in rowing and you do live in the local vicinity or even further afield, make sure you get yourself down to Henley at some point in the next 20 days to witness some of the finest rowers, both here in the UK and further afield. I believe actually we've got some fantastic uh, entries here this weekend. Certainly in the Championship 8, we've got the University of Iowa have come across, Drexel University, some fantastic crews from the USA. We've got a lot of Dutch representation both here and at the Royal in a couple of weeks time. We've actually got a crew from Mexico, which is phenomenal. Um, the trip is a sizable one, I imagine. You know, always Australian crews come across, Sydney University and Sydney Boat Club come across to support. But just as I look back at the screen, I think we're underway in race 24, the heat of the academic aspirational eights. It's Durham University on the Berkshire Station and Bristol University B, so we can get back to some racing. Joe, Definitely looking like Durham have taken it a flying star out of the blocks at the moment, but 
um, as we said earlier, after the island, you do lose that little bit of shelter that you gain, so that may be affected. But we can't quite see the margin um, on this shot at the moment, but I, I believe it's still Durham in the lead. Interesting here, because we've got both universities who have had um, a lot of success in the last few years, particularly at Bucks, um, and I believe that their programmes are only growing, so it's interesting that they, they're probably thinking of this as probably some of their stiffest competitions. Certainly they're going to know the girls from um, the regatta circuit and probably know some of them quite well as well at this point. Some of them will have been rowing against each other for a long time, so um, definitely wanting to win against their friends as well as... Um, for their university. Definitely Durham have taken a flying start, I think. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, Bath-Bristol composite that we saw earlier perhaps snatched away some of the uh, better rowers in the Bristol squad and they're paying the price for that. Durham, obviously one of the powerhouses of the student rowing circuit, already looking pretty relaxed as they make their way down to the Berkshire station in that distinctive... I'm not sure what the correct word is for the colour of their kit, but I always think refer it's to mauve. it. think it's mauve. Mauve, purple, mauve. Durham. Purple. That, yeah, Palatinot. Palatinot, that too. In the Palatinot kit. <laughs> On their way down, of course. They have two lengths over Bristol. Plenty of support for both crews. I think we've got a little congregation of supporters just down below us who are making their voices heard, and that will be a huge help to uh, both boats. I think in a situation where you've been kept at the start line for so long, it can be quite difficult to to understand the margins when you finish as to whether, well, what would have happened had we started on time? Would the result have been different? But um, that's the beauty of, and well, the beauty and the nightmare of side-by-side uh, -side racing is that you have one shot and you've got to perform uh, when it's needed. I think it's a fair point to make, Joe, but I have to say, I think Durham could have started next year, could have started <laughs> half an hour ago. I think they'd still have won this race. They're in complete yeah. control. And I have to say, probably one of the best academic eights I've seen so far today. Well, I think we've got some interesting names coming up. Um, we've got the Oxford Brooks B crew and the University of London uh, A crew. So some, some big names and big clubs with uh, huge squads and huge depth of squad. So, um, you know, I think we've got some good racing ahead of us. Well, not much mistaken. This Durham crew got Maddie Orr in the bow seat. Maddie, uh, a local girl here in Henley. She rode at Henley Rowing Club and then shipped Lake Vikings as a junior and I think won everything there was to win at J16 level in a pretty indomitable quad. Uh, it's good to see her making her name on the uh, rowing circuit at Durham University. A bit of a trip home, I imagine, from Durham to Henley. But nice to see her back in her hometown and, and making waves again. On the Henley stretch, certainly in total control of this one, alongside her eight other crewmates. The rate has come right down here, and they're enjoying this. Well, I can imagine they're enjoying this, being able to uh, watch every move their opposition make to no avail. So yeah, as you said, Joe, we've got uh, three more heats of the academic aspirational eights coming up. It's Newcastle up against Drexel University A. That should be a tasty contest. And then Warwick face Oxford University, Br Oxford Brooks University B, and then the University of London A come up against Mount St. Joseph's A. And there we go, we can just return to the start for the contest between Newcastle and Drexel. Newcastle on the Berkshire Station and Drexel on the Buckinghamshire Station. It looks like Newcastle. I was they've already taken a lead there by the looks of it. Yeah, very good. Very strong from those girls. I'm always a bit caught, a bit split as to whether to support domestic crews whenever they, you know, they, they triumph over US or Australian entries or to support the, the crews that have travelled across the Atlantic or across the world to be here at Henley. It must be tough to be uh, exiting in the early rounds. And that's not to say Drexel will be. But they've got a lot of work to do here. Newcastle looking really powerful, really dynamic as they come down the course.
Newcastle really having a very commanding start to that race. Um, Just look at the way they row. There's uh, absolutely that's no exactly quarter given. Thinking. But also looking remarkably relaxed as well. I always think that's a, the sign of an incredibly powerful crew when they can look quite so relaxed and yet have a lead like we're seeing come past us at the moment. Well, I think the word is making it look easy. Yes, yes. Very much so. With two lengths on Drexel. Gabby Munyard in the uh, four seat of this Newcastle crew. She used to write for my blog. Very talented athlete in her own right. And nice to see her laying down some watts in the four seat of this Newcastle crew. Of course, it's interesting uh, comparing Brooks and Newcastle and the way they row because obviously they're perennial rivals. They always come across each other. The Bucks at Henley, wherever it happens to be. And the styles are quite disparate, actually. Newcastle place a lot of emphasis around the back end. So you can really see as they come out together, there's a lot of oomph there at the finish, whereas Brooks are lightning quick around the front end. And I think that's where perhaps the dichotomy of the rowing stroke is that it's sort of most polarised, where you can actually see who emphasises what part of the stroke and who places the most importance on, on the boat send at, at each bit. But it, obviously it's working for both crews. Brooks having already progressed and Newcastle looking like they're going to. I think what's interesting about both of the clubs that you've mentioned there is that they're both a testament to when you have a a strong rowing uh, coaching structure in place. You know, both clubs, Brooks and Newcastle, have had a um, the same coaching team for several years now, and and it's showing and it's reflecting their results. Just how having that consistency can create a, a foundation which is kind of unbeatable, really. Yeah, so Newcastle in control of that race, I would say. So we'll return to the start for the third heat of the academic aspiration lates. It's Warwick University on the Berkshire Station and Oxford Brooks University B on the Buckinghamshire station. So we've already seen one Brooks crew make it through, and it was a very tidy looking Brooks crew, it has to be said. Can they make it too? I wouldn't bet against them. No, I think we, everyone by now knows that Brooks is renowned for its battle paddling between the crews, so I'm sure that these uh, two eights will have competed against each other many, many times. Um, so being in a side-by-side -side situation with another crew is going to be something that they are not unfamiliar with. Um, and clearly incredibly confident with as well, given this start, wouldn't you say, Tom? Yeah, Brooks absolutely smashing it. It is worth noting that a lot of the athletes who come to Brooks have had rowing experience before they arrive, but Warwick, actually all of these girls learned to row and cox at Warwick, so they were taught by the infrastructure already in place at the club, and they're actually rowing for their captain, Alice Vodden, who had her third operation this week. I assume that's of a medical nature, so good luck to Alice. We hope uh, you have a safe and... Hopefully a uh, positive recovery. But Warwick, you know, laying it down here in honour of their captain, but at the moment just being outclassed by pretty simply a stronger Brooks, Brooks crew on the day. And as you said before, the, that the catch of the Brooks crews is um, very, very distinctive and just so relaxed. They're really not missing anything at the front end there. Yeah, I think that's maybe the best contrast between the two crews in the way that Brooks row and the way that Newcastle row. There just seems to be a little less emphasis around the back end with Brooks, but a lot more importance placed on catching it out front and moving it, sending it in the water, and it's working for them. You know, I wouldn't bet at all against seeing a Brooks-Brooks semi-final, perhaps even a final. That's how strong their programme is. You know, double winners of the ladies and the Temple at Henley Royal last year, and numerous medals across the domestic season in the women's and men's side. So a phenomenal programme in place there. Henry Bowhacker webb we pay testament to him every year but every year they really do take my breath away Oxford Brooks I think with Oxford Brooks as well it's a testament to just how strong the support network is as well both the men's and the women's uh, sides of the clubs are incredibly supportive of one another I've kicked out Tom now so this is Zoe Desolado coming back in um, for this next race which will be the last heat of the academic aspirational eights. And Brooks, and in, uh, still in our picture, uh, c clearly a very commanding lead. Zoe, what would you be coxing right now as they're coming past with this sort of lead? I think just to stay relaxed and to make sure that they're, you know, enjoying the experience and getting, uh, getting a good 
practice run down the track because not all their races are going to be like this. So no. yeah, you've got to use it and and got the best uh, get the best out of it. But I, I imagine you you would know better as a rower. You know you want to relax. You you want to take it easy yeah. when you can see the opposition behind you. I think it's always quite a difficult balance to get between you want to relax and t- to uh, take it easy to to kind of conserve energy for the next heat. But equally, you also want to have a test of the legs, see what you've got in them. Um, you know. We've got another race going off the start here. Looks like University of London and Mount St. Joseph A. Yep, so University of London on the Berkshire Station and Mount St. Joseph A on the Buckinghamshire Station. That seems a very clean start from both crews coming out of the start there. Yeah, looks like Mount St. Joseph have just about taken the lead there. Like you said, clean coming out the start, very aggressive from both crews. Mount St. Joseph very close to the booms there. Got a nice line coming straight out of the start and up onto the booms. UL look like they just come into the middle a bit, coming back towards the Mount St. Joseph crew. Uh, you, we can see as we're, they're coming towards the commentary box, just looking like they're finding their line there. Looking like Mount St. Joseph kept the rate higher a little bit compared to the UL crew, from what I can see at this angle. Yeah, I think it's always quite difficult because especially if you're down off the start and the other crew's perhaps rating a bit higher, you need to you need to know you need to know you, you need to know your race plan, you need to know what's best for you. And it's very easy in one-on-one racing to just think, oh, they're rating higher, we should do that too. But sometimes you really need to relax and you need to, you know, get your best rhythm. And that's not necessarily, you know, sometimes you've got to take the chance and say, actually, no, we're going to settle. But this is uh, a great yeah, race just here just coming and past Just as us. they come past, they've got an interesting rig on the Mount St. Joseph crew as well. I hadn't quite noticed that before with the, the double bucket. But I definitely wouldn't say that that is um, a foregone conclusion with the Mount St. Joseph crew. Um, no, while Mount St. Joseph do look more aggressive, UL look much more relaxed. relaxed and actually, yeah. you know, I think it's pretty impressive. They're down, but they're just saying, nope, this is what we do. And actually, looking at the last shot we had, it looked like they'd put some ground up. I, I think it's actually looking like they're incredibly confident. They haven't been thrown at all. They're working into their rhythm. It's not looking like they've been thrown at all by just being caught slightly off guard out of the blocks by the sounds of it. I think UL have come almost dead level now. Yeah. There's not much in it at all. Maybe a canvas. We'll see now as this, sh- this shot comes past us, whether that UL crew have just managed to get their bow ball in front. Oh, it's still very close. It's incredibly I think a close few now. seats now to Mount St. Joseph. But just reiterating what you said earlier, I think the UL crew just looking so relaxed. Mount J- St. Joseph is looking like they've put in a big push from what we can see. That n- they've now taken a couple of seats back. It's looking like this is going to be a, a close finish. It will be interesting to see what both crews have got kind of left in the tank approaching the finish line. As you said, both crews went off very aggressively, so it will be a case of seeing what they've got left in in the tank at the finish line. Yeah, this is a fantastic race from that aerial shot. It looks like maybe a few feet in it. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to see this race staying close all the way to the line. And this is what Henley Women's Regatta is all about. It's about close side-by-side racing, match racing against crews that, you know, these two crews probably will never have raced each other uh, before. And it, it is very blind. You're going into it not knowing quite the, the calibre of the competitor that you've got. And this race, they're certainly giving each other a, a good run for their money. As you said, it's so close in it still. By the looks of it, just a few feet between them. Looks like Mount St. Joseph starting to make that higher rate work for them. They just look like they really want it. You know, they're hanging on there. You can see that maybe it's not the tidiest rowing, maybe it's not the neatest, but they are absolutely putting it down to make sure they stay ahead of that UL crew. They are just, just about in control. But this is going to be a very close run thing. I think what you said earlier as well is when when you've only got uh, two crews racing each other, sometimes it is a case of the 
the mental strength to keep to your race plan and not just go, okay, we're ahead, we're going to try and stay ahead. And we're starting to see now the uh, Coxless Fours race come behind Durham University versus Pembroke College, Oxford. Looks like Pembroke College having a little bit of trouble with their steering, but have just managed to uh, avoid the fate that um, befell Queen's University a few uh, Queen's University ladies a few races ago. But just looking to struggle to stay now with that Durham crew, who again just seem to be stretching out and relaxing a little bit into the race.